Hello! In this video, I'm going to be walking you through QuickBooks for Etsy, otherwise known as QuickBooks Self-Employed. QuickBooks Self-Employed is a very different product from their other products that they have. I personally use QuickBooks Simple Start for my business finances, but I wanted to check out QuickBooks for Etsy since I do have an Etsy shop to determine if maybe that was a better fit for me. So right now I'm just going to walk you through all that's included in QuickBooks for Etsy, which as I mentioned is the same thing as QuickBooks Self-Employed. Okay, now in QuickBooks for Etsy you can link it up with your Etsy account, naturally, since it's QuickBooks for Etsy. And that has already been done. And I've also linked a couple, a couple of other of my financial accounts, but not all of them since I'm just testing the waters here. I also wanted to mention that with other QuickBooks products, you are not able to link them to your Etsy account. So that is a unique feature of QuickBooks Self-Employed. All right, so we've got, we're on our home screen right here. And it's telling us how many transactions we have to review. These are the accounts that we've connected. It gives you a general overview of profit and loss and expenses. And these will be up to date once you review all of your transactions. So right now, these only comprise amounts that I have already reviewed. And as I review and accept certain transactions, these numbers will change. Down below, they give you an estimated tax payment for the year. Uh, if you would like to follow their guidelines, there is a mileage section I'll show you, and they do have an invoice section. So if I was using those features, information would be populated there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, click to review transactions. It's the same, we can get there two different ways, selecting review now, or simply going to the transactions over here on the left. Okay, so you can see some of our transactions here. And what I've noticed that QuickBooks Self-Employed seems to emphasize is the type of transaction is it is whether it's a business transaction personal or a split between the two i actually don't find this feature very helpful because if you are doing your business bookkeeping properly it should be all business transactions anyhow you really should not have one bank account that handles business and personal transactions. So I don't find this feature to be very helpful, but they seem to emphasize this as a plus. Okay, so then once you select the type, which as you can see in blue, that's what they're suggesting that it is, then you can select the category. Um, so it's guessing what category it should go in, and that's a decent choice that they have made. Um, so you can select what type of category it is over here, or you can browse in more detail. So if they got it wrong that it was actually income, we could change that. They didn't get that wrong. Um, but then down here, you can browse the other category choices. So let's see, tech, that's where they came up with their software result. Or let's just take a look at all of the categories so you can get a feel for it. Vehicle, that would be mostly if you own a vehicle within your business because mileage is the way that you would track vehicle costs if of your personal um, car. Financial, so we've got some loan payments in here or loan interest um credit card payments things like that taxes federal state property and sales tax now this would be for sales tax payments i'll um i'll explain about sales tax in a little bit we looked at tech and equipment so a lot of utilities in here computers phone things like that 
Other essentials, they're calling it advertising, office supplies, materials, okay, typical printing, uniforms, typical expense categories. Insurance, business, vehicle, health. Fees, I'm guessing bank fees. We got listing fees for Etsy, shipping fees, transaction processing fees. Travel, meals and entertainment, parking. Hired services, so if you've got a VA or something like that. And workspaces, so more utilities, tax, things of that nature. <clears throat> so I will select, <clears throat> excuse me, their first choice, app software business. And I believe, let's see, I'm going to save this. Well, let me mention this. You can drag receipts here if you would like or browse on your computer for scanned receipts. Okay, so we hit save. Now the one thing that is not my favorite with QuickBooks Self-Employed, which is different from the other QuickBooks products, is that the transaction doesn't go anywhere. Um, it just stays all on one screen, so it gets confusing. What have I looked at? What have I not looked at? With QuickBooks Simple Start, which is my preferred version of QuickBooks, and I, I really like it, so I don't want to bash the QuickBooks products, um, but I think a negative with QuickBooks Self-Employed is the fact that all the transactions stay on this screen, and they don't move over to another tab like they do in Simple Start so that you know that they have been reviewed and are accurate. So as far as if you are an Etsy seller, what does it bring over as far as transactions go? Let's take a look at the Etsy bill first. So they are bringing over from the Etsy bill the payment processing, a payment processing fee. Oh no, that's for a sale, excuse me. September fees for promoted listings. Man, I spent way more on advertising than I wanted to that month. Uh, shipping labels, transaction fees, and listing fees. So that's, that's exactly the type of information I would like to see from an Etsy bill. So that is already carried forward for you and included. And they have selected, um, in most cases, the, the right category for those transactions. So let's go ahead and look at deposits then. For deposits, there's a certain one I, I wanted to uh, show you. Okay, it's this one right here. So they bring in the information as the sale is made. So uh, this sale actually occurred on 920 and that's when you see the income recorded and they deduct the processing fee. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this transaction is because I actually went into my Etsy account detail and I was looking for the most recent transaction where somebody purchased and they were charged sales tax. So what you'll see missing here from this uh, transaction, no sales tax. The other thing that you'll notice is missing right here is that there is no uh, breakout of the shipping that they paid, the shipping income. This is the total gross amount that they paid, which includes the product, it includes shipping, and it includes sales tax, but it's all recorded as one lump sum, as you can see here. So I think that is a major drawback of QuickBooks for Etsy, it, especially when it comes to sales tax, and I did look in their help section to find out more about that. They basically don't support any sales tax methods or systems or like balance sheet items in QuickBooks Self-Employed. So you would have to manually calculate that at the end of each year, make a payment, and then you can select that you made that payment as sales tax, 
but it's a little bit different from tracking it all year so that you had a sales tax payable amount um, actually in your bookkeeping records that you could look at when making a payment. So that, that's to me um, a bit of a drawback. The other drawback, and I forgot to mention this, is we, when we were talking about all of the categories, you, you can't create your own. I, I kind of like to customize my, my categories, my chart of accounts, and I do that within QuickBooks Simple Start. And here you cannot select anything different. You have to use their predefined categories. And um, maybe it's just me, but I kind of like to create categories and accounts that make sense to me and organize them in my financial statements in a way that makes sense to me. And this does not um, allow you to do that. Okay, so that's, that's the transaction side of things. Over here in miles, you can apparently get an app for mileage or you can track your miles by hand. So that's nice. The other emphasis, it seems, of QuickBooks Self-Employed is the tax side of things. And they encourage you to link this up with TurboTax. And I think that's why some of the transactions are predefined and you can't make your own because these are going to go directly, they can match directly to your Schedule C with TurboTax when you do your tax return. So I think that is, that's, that's part of the reason why they're not letting you create your own categories. And that's why they have a couple other things here like the miles. Next is taxes. So this is where they have your estimated payments that they think you should be making. And then we'll go to reports. Actually, let's do invoices first, then reports. So invoices, you can set it up to send invoices with QuickBooks Self-Employed. So that is a nice feature. If you use accounting software that does not allow you to invoice, PayPal is always a great choice. They are easy to create invoices that look nice within PayPal as well. Let's go to reports. So in reports, as you can see, the big limitation is that there's no balance sheet. And at least to me, that's, that's, a big, that's a big part of how accounting works is a balance sheet. This is what you would call single entry accounting where you're only posting the one side, you're only posting uh, income and expense, you're not tracking the balance sheet items like cash, receivables, payables, and equity. Um, and that is why you will also see where, when we've been talking, there's no account reconciliation feature. You cannot reconcile your bank account. Okay, so let's view the profit and loss statement. Now, once again, this is only for stuff I've recorded or saved, I guess, um, not for the things that I still needed to look at. Um, you can drill down and see the transactions that make up uh, that number. Um, you... And obviously, like they've got the full profit and loss statement here, and all of this would tie to the Schedule C when you do your taxes. Let's go back to reports. Um, they have a tax summary, see so Schedule C, they're tying um, that to there, um, and a tax detail, which um, shows up as an Excel document. Um, if you are familiar at all with accounting, you will know that often a nice feature is the ability to post a journal entry. Uh, that is also not included with QuickBooks Self-Employed. Once again, that's because this is on the single entry method of accounting, which is not generally accepted accounting practices. Um, so there's no ability to post journal entries. So. Let's talk about really briefly the pluses and minuses of QuickBooks Self-Employed. Um, the plus is being able to link to your Etsy account and the ability, the 
Etsy bills already split out for you. Um, and the transactions are broken into the gross less the fees. That's nice. Um, it's bringing in transactions automatically. It's memorizing transactions. It's, um, it's easy to use. So uh, it has a profit and loss statement. You can link it to um, TurboTax. You can track your mileage. Uh, oh, and there's something on here on, on taxes. There was also a some other features down here to remind you um, about vehicle deductions, to remind you about home office deduction. So this is this is going to link directly to TurboTax if you say you've got a hundred square foot home office, um, assets, healthcare, things like that. So it has a couple extra tax features. So all around decent. I think the major drawback is the inability to customize, um, the lack of a balance sheet, which I, I find to be a big drawback, um, lack of bank account reconciliations, lack of tracking sales tax payable, um, and things of that nature. So my, my uh, preference has always been QuickBooks Simple Start. But I wanted to walk you through QuickBooks for Etsy so that you could make a more informed decision before you go to all the work of setting this up if it is, in fact, the right software for you. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I can pop back in and create a different video if I need to answer a different question or I can answer your questions in the comments. And if you need more tax and accounting help for your small business, Etsy or otherwise, feel free to visit me at smallbusinesssarah.com. Thank you.